What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because the ban list just came out and it introduced a crazy new meta into today's game because this ban list did so much to the last format's decks but the one thing that it did do and what I truly believe happened is it made Sky Striker the best deck in the format. This deck is almost at full power again. We have two engage and three multi-roll absolutely insane so in today's video what i'm gonna be doing is showing you guys two different builds of sky striker not one but two different builds a going first build and a going second build that are competitive in today's format now if you guys enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu Gi Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channels deck profiles combo videos dual videos shorts all that good stuff you'll get it right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that now i don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long and i don't want to say it's a great thing that striker is back because me personally, I didn't like Striker when it was around, but I'm actually kind of excited that it's back. So with that, let's get right into the deck profile. All right, so just before we get into the profile here, I do want to say that I actually have two builds of Sky Striker that I want to be showing you guys in today's video. So this is a go second build of the deck, but then I also have a go first build over here featuring DPE that I'm going to be showing you. So I'm going to be doing two deck profiles in one video today. Let's start off with the go second deck profile. I'm going to be a little bit quicker in today's video just because we are doing two decks, even though it's kind of like the same deck but it's two different ways to play it so let's get right into it here we are starting off with three ray two rows i think these are the standard ratios that you guys are going to be playing everyone knows why you have to be playing three ray this card is insane and with engage back at two this card is like ah, it's just so nuts this deck is so crazy how consistent it is so yeah three ray two rows and then for the hand traps we got three ash two valor as well as three gamma seal so specifically we want to be playing valor in this deck because it being a spellcaster is really good to go into selene which helps you go into access code which is kind of nice but on top of that Valor is just not bad into today's format. Post Bandless, I think Koshtora is still going to be a good deck. Koshtora, of course, just losing a Unicorn and a Rise Heart. Diablosis is one thing, but the deck is still very consistent and can still do a lot of things. So I think Valor is still really important in that sense. And so I think Ash and Valor make a lot of sense. And I really think Gamma Seal makes a lot of sense in this build for multiple reasons. So one, the thing is with this format now is I really believe this format is going to come down to purely Sky Striker. Those are going to be really too powerful decks. Koshtora is still going to be up there. Super Super heavy samurai can still combo even though it lost its pieces like in the link monster it can still combo so it's going to be a lot of uh boss monster based decks and even in the sky striker mirror match camiseal and the kaijus are really good because you're going to be putting a monster on their side of the field which means they can't activate their spells also you're going to be getting rid of whatever link monster they have on board which is very powerful as well and it doesn't trigger ray so i still really like three camiseal in today's format i think it makes a lot of sense to be main decking it but the other reason i think it makes a lot of sense to be playing it is because in this go second build specifically we're playing change of heart as well as mind control and now change of heart and mind control are both really good because if you gamma seal your opponent's monster mind control it back or change a heart it back and then you can link it away now you've essentially gotten a monster out of your opponent's like zone for free and you might be thinking oh but why don't you just change a heart your opponent's monsters sometimes depending on what the situation is those monsters might be unaffected so for that reason you can't just change a heart that monster but again it all depends right because if your opponent has a baron and you go change a heart they might negate the baron now if your opponent has an arise heart that can be targeted that can be affected then you can just take Take the rise heart so it's all situational but there are situations where gamma seal is really good because you take away their boss monsters their towers their unaffected monster and then you take it with change of heart or mind control if not you just take it with those cards which is obviously really powerful as well then we're playing of course of course two sky striker mobilize engage this card is absolutely insane this card is literally just pot of greed like it's just pot of greed that, that's how good it is so yeah this card is insane being able to pot of greed essentially draw a card and search any single card that you need is absolutely crazy so you have to be playing two we're playing three multi-roll of course multi-roll is now back at three you guys might be thinking here because it says that it's still at one this is because the program still hasn't updated to the new ban list yet so this is the old ban list but it's now at three right and multi-roll being at three is insane because this card I feel like a lot of people forgot how powerful this card is. This card literally says you can send a card you control to the graveyard and your opponent can now not activate card effects in response to your spell card activations for the rest of the turn. That is insane. You're pretty much making all of your spell cards spell speed three, I think, like the super poly ones where your opponent can't react to them. Like that's crazy, right? So you need to be playing three multi-roll. Multi-roll now at three is also really good because you can send like your area zero, which is really powerful. So that's why you got to be playing three multi-roll. Then we're playing three Widow Anchor. Widow Anchor is still one of the best cards 
in the deck, target a monster, negate its effects. If you have three spell cards, you take that monster. Absolutely insane. So we're playing three Widow Anchor. Three Linkage, again, because this is a going second deck. Having Linkage is really, really important because as soon as you see this, if you see this essentially with the array and any way to break an opponent's board or your opponent doesn't put up much of a board, you're going to be able to OTK, which is crazy because now this gives a deck that's more or less a control deck a way that you can go second, break boards, and OTK, which is crazy, right? So three Linkage, very much necessary over here. Two Afterburner as well as the Jamming Waves. These are just spot removal, which is really nice. So being able to play spot removal in the deck is obviously very powerful as well in today's format. So two and one, I think is all you need. We're playing two Shark Cannon. We're not on three. I was on three for a while. I cut it down to two. You can definitely go to three if you want to cut the Harpy's Feather Duster. You can, you can make this now three. I thought two was just enough though. Not too many decks. I mean, other than Super Heavy Samurai, if you really think about it, plays super hard with their graveyard. So I think Shark Cannon Well is still a very powerful card, and it's not saying that no decks are going to be playing with their graveyard. I just think it's less powerful as it was in something like, let's say, a Tier Limits format. Obviously, we're long gone from the Tier Limits format, but I'm just saying that like this card is still very powerful. It still has a lot of uses. Two Shark Cannon, I think, is all you need, and then the one Hornet Drones, of course. One Eagle Booster, I really like Eagle Booster, making your cards unaffected is really nice, as well as one Hercules base. This card is actually really powerful, low-key. I feel like a lot of people either didn't play this card or maybe they tried to tech it in here and there, but I think this card is really powerful at one. I think it's really nice. And then, of course, we're playing two Area Zero as well as the one Terraforming. Area Zero, obviously, with three multi rolls, is very, very powerful, being able to activate its effect. You can pretty much always trigger its own effect, which is really nice. And then the Terraforming, be able to search it, also gets a spell card in your graveyard, which is really nice. Rhoda, getting a card in your graveyard, gets your way to Ray, which is also really powerful one upstart goblin of course to get another spell and to make this deck pretty much 39 cards on top of the two engage which is insane and then we have the one change of heart the one mind control and the one harpy's feather duster i think these are pretty self-explanatory just good going second spell cards that you guys can play in today's format i'm not playing lightning storm i was thinking playing lightning storm in the main deck i chose not to just because the card i think although it's really powerful I don't know how insane it's going to be in today's format specifically, so maybe there might be room in it for it, but I think in the main deck right now, I really like how this is looking. I think monster boards are more relevant right now, and people can play around Lightning Storm, so that's why I decided to play it this way. Then for the extra deck, very standard extra deck, one Zeke, three Shizuku, three Kagari, three Hayate, one Kaina, one Dark, one Unicorn, one Selene, as well as one Axis Code. I don't really need to go into this too too in much in depth, because the other extra deck as well for the second profile is pretty much the same. I think there's only one change here. You can maybe cut the unicorn for a second zeke if you want to but i do like having the generic link three as well which is really powerful for a side deck now because this is a going second deck already you still want to be playing a couple other go second cards but you're really going to be focused on going first so three nibiru of course is really powerful three ogre i think is really good in today's format as well this could also be droll and lockbird so keep that in mind i just want to give you guys different options but ghost ogre is really powerful could be droll and lockbird three cosmic cyclone the reason i'm playing cosmic cyclone over lightning storm again like i was talking about not playing lightning storm in the main deck the reason i would actually play cosmic cyclone is because a lot of people i think are going to be siding anti-spell in today's format lightning storm harpy's feather duster all those back row hate cards don't do too much against uh, the anti-spell you really need quick play removal and i think cosmic cyclone is the best quick play removal you can play you can play twin twister as well but i think cosmic cyclone is just a little bit better then for going first we're playing 3d barrier obviously really good into branded really good into mana dome which i think are going to be more prevalent in today's format which is really nice so 2d barrier oh it's really good into dragon link as well calling synchro is pretty nice as well so that's why you want to be playing 3d barrier and then three solemn judgment of course going first is really Really good because you do lose pretty hard if you're not OTKing, you lose pretty hard to evenly in those other cards. So Solemn Judgment is really nice going first. All right, so that's it for the first tech profile. Let's get into the second one over here, which is pretty much a very similar build, except you're playing the DPE package here. So for the main deck, you're playing three Ash, two Valor, three Ray, two Rose. That's essentially the same ratios that you guys were playing before, but we're now not playing the Gamma Seals anymore. Of course, we want to go first. We want to set up boards with this deck. So we're playing the one Celestial and the one Dasher. I think it's very important to be playing these DPEs, giving you that other form of disruption that this deck doesn't otherwise have. On top of it, it being able to get itself off the field pretty much at any point you wanted to, synergizes really well with the Sky Striker cards. Then of course, we're playing two Engage, three multi roll, three Widow Anchor, two Linkage in this build. We're not playing three because again, it's not an OTK build of the deck. It is a going first build. So I think two Linkage is all you need. We're playing two Afterburner, one Jamming Waves, same old, same old, two Shark Cannon, same old, same old. We have the one Hornet Drones, the one Eagle Booster, and the one Hercules base, as well as the two Area Zero and the Terraforming. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Striker cards. Pretty much 
much the same exact striker cards in the lineup that you guys are seeing in the last build, except we're only playing two linkage instead of, instead of three now. Again, because it's on an OTK deck, I don't think you need the three linkage. I think two linkage is perfectly fine because turns three, turns four in like a couple turns, essentially, then you can really start to push for a lot of damage and go for game, right? So that's why I like these ratios. One Rota, of course, for the Ray, but we're playing three Fusion Destiny now. Of course, Fusion Destiny is really good with the DPE. So I think you have to be playing three Fusion Destiny. And there's something else that I, in this deck that I'm gonna show you guys in a second here, which is one upstart and two pot of Avarice. So I'm actually choosing to play two pot of Avarice, which a lot of people might be like, why are you playing Avarice? Well, you guys can see we're not actually playing any draw cards in this deck. I don't wanna play Desires. I just, I don't like playing Desires. And I think Avarice makes a lot of sense because it's so easy to get monsters in your like graveyard turn one, right? Especially if you start counting stuff like your hand traps and your DPE package, because I've literally done it like it's it's happened before where you can shuffle back your entire DPE package and fusion destiny again, which is absolutely insane. So that's why I really like Pot of Avarice. And again, it's really not hard to get cards in your graveyard, like monsters in your graveyard in this deck, because you're gonna be linking away your link ones at all times and it shuffles back your link ones, which is really nice, right? So that's really powerful, of course, in its own. So two Avarice as well as one upstart, very good draw power for the deck. And then the extra deck is pretty much the same thing as the last one, but instead of playing Unicorn, we're playing the one DPE now because we have the fusion destiny package, of course. And this card is just insane. I think still in today's format, it's still very powerful, right? So that's it for the extra deck. I mean, three, 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 one, one, and then one dark, one Selene, one access code for the OTK. And then for the extra deck here, uh, because we are going first in this deck and we're playing more of a control build with this one, we're playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster, two Lightning Storm, and two Cosmic Cyclone. In this one, I did want to play Lightning Storms. Um, you guys can play three Cosmic Cyclone here and then maybe cut the Lightning Storm for another card. But the reason I decided to play Lightning Storm in this one is because I feel like siding Lightning Storm in into certain matchups makes a lot more sense than maining Lightning Storm in the other build where Lightning Storm might not be good into certain matchups, so that makes sense, right? You still need to be playing Cyclone though, because I think the quick play is still very important against uh, anti-spell and whatnot. So you still need to be playing the Cyclone. And then the change of heart, of course, for going second. Three Yama Seal, three Nibiru, and three D-Barrier. These are your going first cards over here. But again, this deck already does so well going first. So you really wanted to focus the side deck for going second. And so that's it for the deck profile. That's it for two deck profiles. Guys, I I feel like I was talking fast, but I really didn't want to waste you guys' time and make this video like 30 minutes long. So I hope you guys got a little bit of insight on how you can play both decks. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video because uh, yeah, I've never done two decks before. This is my first time doing it. And let me know in the comment section if you guys would prefer me do decks with different versions this way or if you guys would just prefer two three four different videos maybe not four different videos i'm sure there's not one deck that can be played four different ways but uh these are two ways that i think you guys can be playing competitively and in this new format i actually think this might be one of the most powerful decks post ban list so if you guys have played striker in the past or if you guys have never picked up striker before this deck is insane and I think it's time for you guys to try this deck out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Sky Striker, both the going first build and the going second build. I wanted to show you guys two different builds. This way you guys can actually play the deck in one way or the other way and still be successful with it. I didn't want to do so many striker videos, right? I just wanted to show it to you guys all right here. Now, if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel. Deck profiles, dual replays, combo videos, all that good stuff. It's right here on the channel. We also do shorts every single day. So you guys are going to get a minimum of five videos per week, but you guys get, might get more. You guys might get 10, literally up to 10 videos a week. Why are you guys not subscribed? Make sure you subscribe. Honestly, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys all for supporting me throughout this journey. We just hit 10K not too long ago. The goals are still, we are still going. We're still going. We we have endless goals and I know we can make it happen. Thanks to all of you guys. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.